Okay, this review will be on the 1982 American League champion, Milwaukee Brewers. Let's get started, as we always do, by dissecting the offense. Let's get started with leadoff guy Paul Molitor. I'm going to show you his on-base chance numbers. Numbers check out uh, good, not great, but those numbers I would basically say is pretty much a starting point. Uh, you really don't want to go much below either one of those numbers. So uh, Molitor's on-base numbers check out pretty solid. Now, let me spend a little time talking about the number two hitter, Robin Yount. Um, 1982 was obviously an MVP season for Robin Yount. Uh, I'm going to show you all of his numbers. And um, kind of similar to the team analysis video that I did on the 1976 Cincinnati Reds, where I raved about number two hitter Ken Griffey in the lineup. Um, Robin Yount's card kind of reminds me a little bit of that card in the sense that you get both really nice on base numbers, plus you get a lot of bang for your buck out of Robin Yount as you see his hits with multiple base advancement. And I really like to see that in a lineup where you have a number two hitter who is just not about just getting on base. I like it when number two hitters also throw in um, a nice chunk of hits with multiple base advancement. And it plays in really well with this lineup because not only does Paul Molitor have nice on base numbers at the top of the order? And he's a double A stealing, which is also nice. But I'll get into this a little later on. The Brewers offense has some guys at the bottom of the order who have decent on base numbers. So Robin Young in this lineup is going to have a lot of opportunities to hit with men on base. So really just a terrific card out of Robin Young and really just the centerpiece of this 1982 Milwaukee Brewers lineup as well. It should be because as I said before, it, it was an MVP season for Robin Yount. Um, now let's look at the meat of the order. Uh, let me show you the um, hits with multiple base advancement for Cooper, Simmons, Ogilvy, and Thomas. Um, there really wasn't much uh, change in this lineup. Uh, the only difference was um, you would have um Thomas hit fifth against lefties and then you against righties, you would have Ogilvy hit fifth. So basically you would just flip flop Ogilvy and Thomas uh, Cooper and Simmons, according to the Stratomatic book are set in stone as the number three and four hitters. So you see their numbers right there. Um, solid numbers, um, good numbers. Uh, what I really like when you see these numbers as a whole is that you really don't have any drop off as you go deeper into the lineup. So you probably getting a pretty good idea as to where I'm going right now with the overall offensive scores. Um, but I do like the depth in this lineup, um, the way these um, numbers are shaking out so far. Now let's show you the platoon at DH where you have Don Money playing DH against lefties and Roy Howell being the DH against right-handed pitching. Um, I'm showing you all of Don Money's numbers um, versus both lefties and righties because I would just make a suggestion and just play Don Money every day um, at DH. Uh, I just like his numbers better than uh, Roy Howell. And you could use Roy Howell off the bench um, late in the game if you need to pinch hit and there's a righty reliever on the mound. Um, although really other than, I don't know, I guess maybe Gantner, maybe there really isn't anyone to pinch hit for in this lineup. Um, but I would just drop that suggestion is just go ahead and just play Don money every day at DH. Now, um, let me go ahead and show you the numbers for the eight, nine hitters, uh, right fielder, Charlie Moore and second base, Jim Gantner. Those are their on base numbers. So, um, those are actually really nice numbers for guys who hit eight, nine in your order. And I spoke on that earlier when I was talking about Robin Yount, how he will have a lot of, uh, opportunities to hit with men on base when they flip the lineup. So, um, as we look at the 1982 Brewers offense as a whole, you're going to see that they grade out at a outstanding score of a 
out of five. I'll have to go back and look, but if memory serves me right, the only offense that I've graded higher to date since I started doing these team analysis videos uh, were the 1976 Reds. I don't believe the 89 Oakland A's came out to a total offensive score of a 4.8, but this Milwaukee Brewer offense is really really solid um there's just nothing to complain about with this offense and as i spoke on before i think you can make it a little bit better if you just play money every day as your dh rather than platooning money and howl um but the offense pretty much is set in stone where you go molitor yount cooper simmons ogilvy thomas you make your decision at DH what you want to do with money and Howell, and then you got more and getting her at the bottom of the lineup. So it just really is a terrific lineup for the 1982 Milwaukee Brewers. Now let's look at the defense. Um, the only real issue um, in the field for the 1982 Milwaukee Brewers is the defense at third base with Paul Molitor. And um, I know, I was speaking before about what to do at DH and some of you may be thinking, okay, why not just play Paul Molitor, have him DH and have someone else play third, but there really isn't anyone else to play third base who has a quality enough grade and an E rating. I went through the cards and Gantner did not have third base availability that year. And the only other third baseman is um, Don Money. So there really isn't much you could do at third base other than play Paul Molitor. You do have Ed Romero who has third base on his card, but his defensive rating is even worse than Paul Molitor. So, and it's really too bad because um, I gave the middle infield defense a perfect score of a five out of five. I gave the outfield defense a very good score of a four and a half out of five. Um, as you go every day in the outfield, you go three, one, two with Ogilvy Thomas and Charlie Moore. Um, and the E ratings actually checked out Um pretty good the middle infield e rating i gave a three and a half the outfield e rating i gave a perfect score but the e rating at the corners um now cecil cooper is fine at first base but the e rating of third base is just not good at all so the e rating score as you could see dragged down the entire score for the defense as the defense graded out at still a very good score of a 4.3 out of five. So that's how we're looking for the 1982 Brewers defense. Now let's look at the Brewers starting rotation. Let's get started with Cy Young award winner from that year, Pete Vukovic. You see his on base chance numbers right there. What I really like about Pete Vukovic's card is, um, yeah, um, I know the on base numbers may be just a little bit high, um, but he does keep the ball in the ballpark, which is nice. Um, now let's go ahead and show you the starting rotation depth. I'm going to show you the numbers from Mike Caldwell, Doc Manage, and Don Sutton. Um, let me show you all of their on-base numbers right there. Um, big issue with Don Sutton's card is uh, there's a lot of power on his card against left-handed hitters, so that could be a big issue. Um, Mike Caldwell has a little bit of power against right-handed batters. Now, the other thing to note here is Don Sutton did not join the Brewers that year until late in the season, so he only had seven starts, so I was a little conflicted as to whether or not I should have included Bob McClure into the starting rotation depth and analyze his card as a starter. He did have 27 starts during that 1982 season. And if I remember right, I think Raleigh fingers got hurt towards the end of that regular season. So that's why McClure had a number of um, relief appearances that year. Um, but what I decided to do for the video was I'm going to stick with Caldwell, Menich, Sutton, and Vukovic as my four starters that I'm going to do my grading on. So you're going to see that the 1982 Brewers starting rotation comes out to a score of a 3.25 out of five. Um, I'm just not crazy about the numbers that you get at a Don Sutton. Um, Doc Menich card is 
decent enough. He's he's a solid three or four starter if you need one, if you're playing like a best of five or a best of seven. Um, so that's my grade on the 1982 Brewers starting rotation. Um, let's look at the bullpen. Let's first look at the closer, Raleigh Fingers. You see his on-base chance numbers right there. Um, little issue on his card. There is a little bit of power on his card against right-handed hitters, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, now, let me show you the numbers for Bob McClure and um, I'm going to put him in the bullpen for this video because the number of times that I've played with the 1982 Brewers in the past whenever I sort of set the team up getting them ready to play I like having Bob McClure as an option out of the bullpen um, you could see he has nice numbers getting left-handed hitters out and his numbers against right-handed hitters is just okay um, the only thing that I don't like about it is that he does have a lot of power on his card against right-handed hitters so that's something to keep in mind for Bob McClure. Um, I'm going to show you the numbers for another guy who was mainly a starter, but also has relief on his card. Let me show you the numbers for Moose Haas. So you could see, you could kind of use him and McClure as a little bit of a mix and match out of the bullpen, which is nice if you choose to do so. Haas has nice numbers getting righties out and McClure, as I showed you before, nice numbers getting lefties out. Um, let me go ahead and show you the numbers for the rest of the bullpen. Let me show you the numbers for Jim Slayton. Gary Augustine and Dwight Bernard. Uh, you see all of those numbers just check out as I would just call them slightly above average numbers. So if we're to look at the 1982 Brewers bullpen as a whole, you'll see that they grade out with a nice score of a three and a half out of five. Um, remembering that two and a half is just an average score. And I did speak on a little bit of a power issue on Raleigh Fingers' card against right-handed hitters. It's still a very, very good closer card. And as I spoke on before, when I play with the 1982 Brewers, I like having McClure and Haas as options out of the bullpen because I don't think their cards are so good enough to justify saying, well, I'm going to use them over Doc Medic in the starting rotation or something like that. But again, it's, it's up to you how you play. And I was a little conflicted as to whether or not I should include McClure and Haas in the starting rotation and just consider the bullpen as fingers, Slayton, Augustine, and Bernard. So I was kind of caught in between figuring out how to analyze the Brewers pitching both the starting rotation and the bullpen, but that's the grade that I land on for the Brewers bullpen, a three and a half out of five. So if we're to look at the 1982 Brewers as a whole, you're going to see that they grade just, just below a four out of five. They come out to a 3.96 out of five. This is a really good Brewers team. It's a very good Stratomatic team. And really the only thing that really brought down the 1982 Brewers score and kept them from being a solid four or even a little bit higher. Unfortunately, it was the defense that you have at third base. Um, you just can't have an E30 at third base. That that's going to hurt you. And Robin Yount's E rating at shortstop is just right at the level where you don't want to go any higher. So the middle infield E rating had to get dragged down a little bit. But let's look at the positives on the 1982 Brewers. The offense is just awesome. It is a really, really good offense. And I think the starting pitching is good enough. And if you play your cards right with the bullpen, like I made the suggestion before of just using McClure and Haas out of your pen, you could stretch the game out a little bit with the bullpen with um, those options that you have. So that's my grade on the 1982 Brewers. They grade out at a 3.96 out of 5, just, just a hair below that magical four out of five number, but don't get fooled by that. This is a very, very good Stratomatic team. In fact, I would say it is definitely one of the top four teams in the American League from the decade of the 1980s. If you were to look at the 1989 A's and the 1984 Tigers as being one, two, um, in terms of the best Stratomatic teams that I've seen from the American League from the decade of the 1980s, then you could definitely make an argument that the Milwaukee Brewers are right there 
um, maybe being the third best team there. 82 Brewers are very similar team um, in terms of overall ranking to the 1983 Baltimore Orioles. I would also throw the 1986 Red Sox up there as well as a really good team from that decade um, with teams like the 1981 Yankees or 87 Twins being farther down the ladder. So it's a really good Stratomatic team, the 1982 Brewers. If you get the Diamond Gem set from the 1980s, uh, definitely check this team out. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, playing with them. So that's my video on the 1982 Milwaukee Brewers. I thank you all for watching. It is greatly appreciated. And I'll talk to you all down the road.